Welcome to the video series on uh, Cloud Data Engineering on GCP. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. Today is we're going to talk about the data transfer services. So without further ado, let's start. Uh, what basically without a data transfer service means, it's basically moving your data from uh, from your like a private data center or wherever your data is to the uh, GCP cloud services. And this is like a step one when you wanna use any cloud Google cloud services, like you need to move your data from um, like your data center or whatever is your source to uh, GCP cloud. Okay, so uh, generally all the organizations or at least I'll say medium to, uh, like a medium to large organizations have their private data centers. And uh, so moving the data will fall into basically three categories. So like from broad level, they will be like, you're moving the data from your private data center to Google Cloud, or you're moving, uh, like you already have your data in some cloud services, uh, for example, Azure or AWS, you wanna moving uh, to uh, Google Cloud. And the other, like the other possible use, or like other possible cases, like you already have your data in GCP and you wanna move it from one uh, cloud storage to other, like from one bucket to other bucket. Okay. Uh, so what are the services or like the suggested products uh, from Google, we have it. Uh, so for anything where like we are moving the data from other pro pro cloud services, uh, storage transfer services the, uh, um, is the best solution. And if we moving from one bucket to other bucket in the cloud storage, then also storage transfer services is there. And now like when we moving the data from private data center to Google Cloud, uh, they're like, few other factors which we need to consider and based on that we picked our services. So the factors which we need to uh, consider when we moving data from our private data center to Google Cloud, uh, there are like a few things which we need to consider. The first is the bandwidth, like what's our network, network bandwidth, like how, how fast we can transfer, that's one thing. What's the size of our data, like how big is our data, what's our timelines and the most important is like uh, uh, what uh, the cost, the price, what we can afford. So based on these factors, like uh, uh, moving the data from private to Google Cloud can be done like three ways. So for example, let's say if we have uh, enough bandwidth and we can, and our data sizes are less than one terabytes, we can use uh, GSUtil, like it's a command line uh, application uh, where we install it um, like on our systems and then we uh, transfer data using like command line, like a copy, from like your private data center to uh, like from private data center computer to the to the bucket. Okay. Uh, the second is like if let's say we still have the bandwidth, but our data size increased. Uh, it's more than one terabytes, or, or and it's less than like twenty terabytes. So in that case, like um, we need to use storage transfer services. So storage transfer services, like you can see, is used in multiple situations when we are copying the data from other cloud services when we copying the data within cloud services and also uh, like if data size is more than one terabytes then and we have a good network in that those situation we can use storage transfer services and there is like third situation or uh, let's say we don't have uh, enough bandwidth even let's say we have the bandwidth the data size is very huge and uh, let's say it's more than 40 terabytes or 100 terabytes in that case transfer application is the best uh, option to do uh, to do the data movement from our private data center to Google Cloud. So we'll look in all three in details. So the first one is the GSUtil. So GSUtil is mainly for smaller transfers uh, from your on-premises on data. So, and, uh, so when, when we say smaller transfers, uh, some it is anything less than one terabytes, but you will be like, okay, one terabyte is a big data, like it's it's a huge data. But uh, compared to other, like if we compare it to petabytes and all, like a, it's it's nothing. Uh, it's it's small, like um, in sense of like if you're a big organization, one terabytes of data is not a very huge data for you. So in those situations, we can use GSUtil, which is like a standard tool of command line, uh, which we can use. Um, or any like uh, which we can use over the enterprise network to copy stuff from our private data centers or even like if uh, like when we are exploring this thing like gsutil is the only uh, i'll say not only but like gs is still like we can explore we can't explore uh, for example transfer app, app appliance we can't explore 
and storage transfer services we can explore a bit but not uh, not with the like a, at a higher scale okay so basically if you have a smaller data set less than one terabytes your bandwidth is good and you have a like a, um, a timeline which you want and you you, you don't want to like a pay more for it go with gsutil and typical use cases is like uh, if you have to transfer a data on as a need basis like for example you got an ad hoc request or something in that case we can use uh, gsutil if like number of files are few or smaller in size even large files like 500 gig file is a very large file but let's say you have only couple of them then in that case also we can use gsutil and it's also used like when we are uh, streaming our data to like cloud storage like when we are uh, like we um, we are consuming the output of a program in those cases also gsutil can be used and the, the one thing i want you guys to keep in mind like uh, when we are considering large data sets like 500 gig is a large data set and let's say it's a like a lot of or even small files let's say we have thousands of small file of 100 MB. So in those cases, like we should use gsutil m, not just like gsutil cp. Uh, this will create like multi-threads and like a, a file will be copied in parallel. If you don't use this option, then it will go sequentially. We'll we'll, uh, we'll see the demo of gsutil in in a while and like in some time but we don't have a large data set, so we won't be able to use this hyphen M option, but like this is like a very good thing to keep in our mind. Uh, the next thing is like storage transfer services for large data transfers of on-premises data. So like it's it's an another, uh, or you can say it's, it's, um, it's a service for on-premise or other cloud data designed for uh, large scale transfer. So anything, uh, more than one terabyte like or it could be up to petabytes we can use storage transfer uh, service and we need to keep in mind like it, it works like it, it have a requirement like your bandwidth need to be good if you don't have a bandwidth then we can't use it and it support both like a full copy or incremental copy and it is very simple uh to manage like it's a, it's uh, to manage uh, because like it, it's through uh, the um through the gui okay so we're going to see that so even uh, like a non-technical person after it is set up we can move the data and like why i kind of emphasis on after it's set up like so to use this service on your on-premises cloud you need to set up this so for that we need to install agents on our uh, computers in our data centers and these are basically like a docker image which we need to install on our uh, computers within the data centers and after like after that like um, uh, once like everything is set up it, it won't be very complicated like we we, we will see in our demo um, uh, the few things like when you are setting up like they need to be keep in mind like we need to use the identical agent on every machines more agent means like more speed and the bandwidth like bandwidth like um, bandwidth should be there like that's what i'm facing like if you don't have bandwidth we can't go with this service and why like, let's say we copying the data from our private data center to uh, google cloud and our data center is used by some other applications too like let's say some ongoing applications so in that case bandwidth might be shared and it could be a challenge so like just keep in mind that thing uh, so typical use cases like whenever you have available like when you have large amount of data any data greater than one terabyte and uh, enough bandwidth use it and uh, also let's say um, you don't want to like uh, it, like you don't want users to run like come online gsutil tool or like assume like they, they're not comfortable with it like, they're having challenges so in those situations also you didn't we need this and it's have like its own um, uh, like a uh, as I will mention like it have its own built-in capabilities like we can get uh, error reports we can record all those things and it can be run on a recurring, recurring basis on a schedule while like GSUtil yeah you can run it but like um, it won't be like through a cron job or something which is um, it won't be that reliable as compared to storage transfer service. And the last one is the transfer appliance. Transfer appliance is an excellent option when we don't have a, like a higher bandwidth and um, 
and assume like a, to get the to get that bandwidth like it's going to cost a lot so in that case like transfer appliance is an excellent option and it's all an excellent option in case of uh, uh like if our data size is huge in those cases i'll uh, i'll say go for a transfer appliance and so typical use cases like our data center is in a, like a remote location let's say somewhere in our north and they we have some challenging with the bandwidth in those cases um yeah we can use transfer appliance and those are like even if we have uh, um bandwidth but uh, zoom like uh, we have a, like a very strict timeline like for example if you have to move within a um within a month or so in those situations transfer uh, appliance is a, a good option too so now let's jump to the gcp one second yeah gcp uh, browser like let's jump to the browser and see like uh, how these things look so this is our bucket like um so i'm going to show you two things like how we transfer uh, from bucket to bucket because that's we can show uh, using the so using the storage transfer service and also GS util uh, how we can copy data from one um, bucket to other. Okay, so f we'll start with uh, transfer. One second. So first, look for the like, look for the transfer, and you will get data transfer. Click on this. Okay, so you see that like. On the left side, there are like four options. So transfer service cloud. So what that means, like when we want to transfer from one bucket to other, transfer service on premises. Like when we want to transfer uh, uh, from our, from our on premises or let's say private data center to GCP, and these are like transfer appliance request and the monitor uh, uh, transfer appliance is like it's a it's a unique way and it's for the large data set so we need to request for it uh, so we will start with transfer service cloud so in transfer service cloud let's say let's create a new transfer job so we have to first pick the source and this could be gcp or even other cloud services too so if you click on drop down you will find amazon aw or even like because it's going it's coming from other buckets so even the url but in our case we will copy from one bucket to other bucket okay before i go there i just want to show you one thing very quickly like storage like what's in our bucket so you don't get confused okay let's go here Okay, so we have two bucket. One is data tech demo one, which have nothing. You can see it's empty. And the other one is data tech demo two, which have one file names.txt. Okay, now let's go to a transfer service. So basically what we're doing, we are copying the name file from data tech demo two to data tech demo one. Let's create a transfer job. And as I was showing, like source could be anything, but like here we're using a Google Cloud storage we'll do browse click on browse so we have a file in data tech to select it then if we can add like a, we can have other filters if you want like a, um we can add uh, what time range prefix if like there are a lot of files in there like what's the prefix of the files and all those but we don't have anything so we'll go with the default so i'll do next and where what's our destination our destination is this we select this and after that also like we go with everything default like there are like bunch of options you can use but for now we go with default and here like how what time you want to schedule it so uh, we do run once but like there are like a lot of other like once uh, you want to run it every day weekly or some custom frequency and all those so let's create it okay one second, let's refresh, probably running. Yep, so you can see it's running in progress and we can go to our storage just to check like if something, because it's a small file, so it should be done by now. So if we go here, data tech one, 
So you see, we have names.txt. So this is how like you can copy data from AWS and Amazon and also for on in on like for those cases we need like a, um, like secret and uh, access key and all those from Amazon and a Azure and we can set up uh, recurring uh, copying the data and uh, that's how like we use the uh, storage transfer service but uh, I can't demo the private center, like a private data center one because I don't have, but uh, now let's, I'll show you GSUtil. Okay, so I'm using like Google Shell, which is built in here, but we can download uh, GSUtil locally on our system and from there we can connect and push data from our local system to here. Okay, so we'll use GSUtil LS so when I do this, it probably asks for the authorization or it already have authorization. So if you do it for first time, it will ask for the authorization. So it will, GSUtil LS will give you like the list of your, uh, uh, list of your, um, uh, what is it? list of your buckets. Okay. So because like if we do print our current working directory, so we are in data tech demo two. And if we do, uh, let's say, gsutil copy i'm not using hyphen m that's why i was talking because that's like for if we have large large number of small files then we can do it and we use this so i believe it's going to add one file from uh, demo 2 i think it's a readme file or something we'll see let's run this so what we're doing we copying Mm. Oh, one second. If we are copying, we need to tell the file type too. So it's my bad. It should work now. Uh, one second. We need to put star because I don't know what's file in there. So let's do this. This should work. Yeah, perfect. Okay, now if we go to our storage. Let's close this, refresh this, or oh, did I other way? I guess we, we copied from uh, two to one, but we'll see. Oh, you see, like now we have a readme file, names were already there, but that's also copied. So that's how you use uh, G, GSUtil. So it's like a command line uh, um, uh, utility where like everything pretty similar to, if you are like coming from Linux background, like a pretty similar commands, but Everything started with GSUtil. Uh, so that's all for this video. And uh, definitely we, we can't show you some, like for example, transfer appliance and storage transfer, like for large data sets we can't show. But I'll, okay, very quickly, I can show you what's in the request of uh, transfer appliance. So that like uh, give you an idea when you're requesting it for first time, what is needed. Okay, if you go here, so in request, like we need to provide the detail, like what kind of, uh, how, how much data we want to move, what's your business name, what's your domain, what's your current location and all those. And I'll show you one thing. If you put like less amount of data, like 15 or something, you will get an error. So it has to be more than 50, uh, 20 terabytes. But as I mentioned, like we, we can't do much here because uh, uh, we don't have a business for which we can submit a request. Uh, so like that's how you submit a request and after that like uh, I think Google Teams reach out to you and they tell you how it can be done because it's like it's more like an offline mode where like they send uh, or either they come to your data center or, or they send something like their servers or something like that which I'm not completely sure. So that's all for this video and uh, stay tuned for um, upcoming videos and keep learning. Have a good